a servant leadership project at Children and Family Urban Movement, um, the Supper Club here in Des Moines, just around the block. Um, and after completing our hours there, um, we can say that this organiza organization makes a huge impact on the kids and the families um, and then the single individuals that it serves. Um, we saw a lot of really great things there. Um, in our presentation here, we'll summarize um, the organization's history, the huge impact they have, as well as sharing our um, unique experiences um, at the Supper Club. Okay, the children and the family urban um, movement uh, mission statement is to create a community that supports the, the potential uh, of children, youth, and families through educational and success in healthy living and community engagement. Um, the CFAM is basically located at the Trinity Unity Methodist Church and it has been around since 1992. Um, similar programs that, um, that the organization um, describes their work as a movement for change that is driven for each person's potential to succeed. The Supper Club approximately um, serves 100 adults and children per night and that's six days a week. Um, during the summer hours, basically, they only do five days a week, and basically during the school um, session, they provide breakfast for the kids um, before they start school. Um, each meal is donated by a local business, and that business is either, it could be a church too as well, and um, basically they donate the food, they make the food, and each meal, um, that basically was served during those evening hours for the mail, basically had uh, each uh, food group for the kids, so that way they have um, a good meal for, for supper. Um, so CFUM has many programs, which I'm sure you're aware of. It has 11 programs. Supper Club is the one we chose to do. And some programs they have are specific to um, boys and girls or um, grade level um, or things like that. Um, so they have um, a program that helps young girls with self-development and success in school. There's high school mentors that are working on um, preventing teen pregnancy. There's an after-school program called The Haven. And then right now, what we witnessed was the Awesome Summer Days program, which helps keep kids occupied, active, and engaged over summer break. That way, they're still learning and still um, you know, keeping on the right track, which is important. Um, and many of these um, children are, um, they come from unhealthy home environments or just a little more unstable or maybe just um, having some trouble financially. Um, so programs within CFUM um, provide love, acceptance, guidance, and role models um, to promote success and make sure these kids achieve their potential. Um, and I talked to one of the teachers from the summer program and she said her goal is to break the chain of violence, teen pregnancy, drug use, um, and incarceration that these children are facing um, due to their circumstances. And basically, we believe that we have made a, uh, a great impact, not only on the children, but as the adults too. Um, we provided assistance in helping cleaning before dinner, after dinner, and basically just helping in multiple um, job um, responsibilities. And, um, and we basically came in with a positive attitude, smiling and helping the kids, um, if needed, getting to the tables to make sure that they didn't spill their trays of food. Um, we also, uh, made a point to make sure that we were wearing our Mercy shirts just to signify where we were um, where we were um, coming from to, and helping with assisting with the supper club and um, and we believe that we made a positive impact not only on the children but it was um, Polly who is basically the leader of the supper club basically she welcomes us with open arms when we come in each time and is so happy to see us. Um, so along with Miss Polly, 
Um, we wanted to talk about her because we think she's very important to the success of the Supper Club. Um, Polly Nelson um, works seven days a week. She has three jobs. Um, her hours, she works about 12 to 14 hours a day. Um, but every time we would go in, she was always happy to see us and she was thrilled. And she asked both of us to continue volunteering, even though this project has um, been completed. Um, so it felt good to not only help the kids and the families, but also take some pressure off of someone who really deserved it. And I think Polly is a good role model for those kids as well. Um, so what we liked is that um, every person that we served was so incredibly appreciative um, of our time and helping and just going above and beyond. Like Tani said, seeing someone that's struggling with their tray, just saying, can I help you um, take this to your table? Um, and we also could tell that people like the new faces being around. It's a little different for them. Um, so when I was be serving, I like to look out at the kids and it made me happy to see that they're smiling and eating and eating their healthy donated meal. Um, so that was really nice. And we hope that our conversations we've had with these um, clients have made an impact on them. Um, basically, um, the project, um, we basically started each, each time we were there just having an open heart. And we just wanted to conclude that this was, um, it just made us realize, you know, how fortunate we, we are and just being able to help others that aren't as fortunate as us and maybe just giving that positive image is to um, setting the example that, you know, maybe giving the kids a future that maybe um, just helping them to make smart choices and, and um, having goals in life and just being able to reach out to us too and talk to us. Um, so next we're gonna talk about um, how CFOM aligns with Mercy's core values, and we decided that um, the two values we wanted to talk about in particular are knowledge and integrity. Um, so we picked knowledge because of all the different academic programs that they have, um, not only school, but um, you know, like street smarts and social skills that they teach the kids, and then also integrity, um, learning right from wrong, which is um, big that they teach there. Um, they teach coping mechanisms, how to deal with being in a tough situation, um, things like that. After talking to some teachers, I learned that. Um, and I think we had plenty of examples of servant leaders um, at the supper club, excuse me. One being um, all the teachers that work with the kids every day. Um, I imagine that their job is pretty high stress, having so many children at a young age. Um, but they appear to be, you know, loving what they do and very, very friendly and open and the kids love them. I noticed many nights where kids would cry or get kind of sad when it was time to go home because they didn't want to leave their teacher. So that um, made me happy that those kids have a role model somewhere in their lives um, if it's not at home. And we believe that um, CFOM is an excellent place to send uh, future servant leadership students um, because they're needed and everyone there appreciates, um, appreciates us, us being there. And it just shows um, it just shows um, you know how the media is about having the negatives. And um, they're always talking about the negatives. And we just wanted to set the image and this presence of that they, they can have a bright future. And when volunteering at the supper club, um, it, I didn't make it as we were there just to volunteer and do our hours. I was there because I wanted to be there and just helping the kids and getting to know the kids and the parents and just spending you know, good quality time. And it's just, you know, it, it's really sad and, you know, makes you want to do more for the kids than just that hour or two hours that you're there. You, you just want the kids to, you know, you, you, 
you know, it's you have a you grow a bond with those kids and the families and and not only with Miss Polly and the janitor and and the, you know the the gal that does the dishes and stuff you create um, you just create a friendship with them as well not only with the families and the kids I think this is a great opportunity for servant leaders to uh, to just just to grasp and see how fortunate we really are. And we thought of, um, I, we looked in the, um, some of the guidelines you had posted and one of the questions was, is she already answered and would this be a good place to send future people? And it definitely is. And we came up with a new role that volunteers could have for these kids. Um, we noticed that every night there was always the same kids that would sit there, not by themselves, they had their friends, but they weren't, didn't have a parent or some kind of guardian with them. And we thought that it would be a good volunteer role um, to have someone that would just go around and sit with the kids that didn't have an adult there. Um, just so you know, what did you learn today? What did you do today? How was your dinner? Um, can you tell me about this? Or Tawny mentioned maybe reading them a book. Um, while they ate or something stimulating like that. Um, so we think that would be really important in the future. Um, and that could make a, another big difference because while we're serving, we're too um, busy making sure everybody's getting you know, their nutrients. Um, and then once we're done serving, all the kids have already left. So um, we'd like to be able to impact them in that way as well. Um, so in conclusion, um, we learned a lot at our time at the supper club. Um, normally dealing with um, a po population that's less fortunate, it can have kind of a negative um, stigma with it, but CFOM, um really does, everything they do is positive and is meant to build these kids up and reach their full potential. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing. Um, so everybody at CFUM is just a big family, even if you've never met them before. Um, so that was a refreshing new thing as well. Um, we've included Polly's contact information in our paper. Um, and we thank you again for the opportunity to serve. Yes.